Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. We were looking at the uh, final verses of Acts chapter 4 yesterday and seeing how the believers shared their possessions. Nobody was in need and they lived for each other just as Jesus had taught them. But that all changes as we look at Acts chapter 5, Colin. Well, the principle doesn't change, but what we have is a situation where people appeared to be doing the very things you've just mentioned but we're not doing it with the right heart. And um, my goodness me, the judgment of God that came upon them really causes us to sit up and take notice. I mean, to us it's quite shocking, literally. So let's see what the scripture says in chapter 5. Another man called Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, sold some property. But he kept back part of the money for himself with his wife's full knowledge. The rest he brought to the apostles. However, Peter said to him, Ananias, what has Satan done to your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept some of the money from the sale for yourself? It was your property before it was sold, was it not? So after the sale, the money was yours to use as you wished. How could you make it appear that you had given the full amount you have lied to God, not only to men. Now, uh, Peter is making the point that Ananias, after selling this property, had the perfect right to do whatever he liked with the money. He did not have to say, well, first of all, he did not have to give it all to the apostles. He could say, well, I've sold this property and I want to make a gift out of the proceeds of that sale. That would have been fine. But what he did was to make it appear that what he was giving was the full amount that he had received for the property. That is a lie. And of course, as Jesus says, Satan is the father of all lies. My goodness, Christians need to remember that, um, that he is the father of all lies. So we certainly don't want to give the enemy any part in our lives or any foothold in the church. So what Peter was perceiving is this is, this is the work of the devil, that, that Ananias, in holding back part of the proceeds, but saying that the amount of money that was given was the whole amount. This was a work of the enemy. Now, when the enemy is allowed to get into a church like that, uh, this can be dangerous. So, uh, what happens? On hearing this, verse uh, 5, Ananias fell to the ground and died. Those who heard of this were shocked and were filled with fear. The young men took Ananias' body, wrapped it in a sheet, and carried it out for burial. Now, let's notice. You could say, well, this was just a coincidence, except that what happened subsequently to his wife shows that it was not a coincidence. It is also clear that this was not the result of anything that Peter said or did. Peter had learned the lesson, I mean, the disciples had learned the lesson that when things went wrong, when there was opposition, when there was a work of of the enemy, you did not call down fire from heaven. Jesus had, had taught them that. So Peter wasn't putting any curse on this person. But this was judgment upon Ananias from God. For what? For lying to the Holy Spirit, as Peter puts it. Now, that's how serious God regarded this. Because, of course, the Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So you don't lie to the Spirit of truth because, of course, he knows what the truth is. 
And then we read in verse 7, about three hours later, his wife arrived, unaware of what had happened. Peter asked her, tell me truthfully, was this the whole price that you and Ananias received for the land? Yes, she replied, that was the full amount. You see, this was their sin. They were deceiving, they were lying. And so what happens? Peter asked her, how could the two of you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the men who are now entering have just buried your husband and they will do the same to you. Immediately she fell to the ground at Peter's feet and died. God's judgment upon both of them because both of them had lied to the Holy Spirit. You can't help wondering if they died in judgment like this, what was their eternal destiny? I mean, ostensibly, they were part of the Christian community, but this is the judgment of God. Well, we don't know the answer to that question. The scripture doesn't tell us. But I sure wouldn't want to be in Ananias and Sapphira's um, shoes because it's one thing to stand before Peter. It's another thing to stand before Jesus himself and to give account for what you have done. So we then read that the young men came forward, confirmed that she was dead, and carried her body out for burial next to her husband. Great fear took hold of the whole church and others who heard of what had happened. Can you well, imagine? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty understandable, isn't it? I mean, if things like that happen today, you can imagine great fear coming up on people. Well, I've known some pretty comparable situations where people have moved against the work of God and things have happened to them. Not, not anything directly to do with me or to anybody else, but you just see, well, wait a minute. God was not allowing that person to do what he intended to do. Sometimes those things are fairly public. Sometimes they happen quite quietly. But what we all have to remember is that we're dealing with God. We're not dealing with men in spiritual things, but we're dealing with God. And Jesus says, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. So the way in which we treat other people, you know, you lie to your spiritual leadership and you're lying to God. And that can't be a good thing to do because God is the truth and the devil is the liar. Do you find it interesting, Colin, that Peter challenged? He didn't judge, but he, he just challenged. That's right. And I, the, to me, when I read this account and when I was translating this, I, it doesn't seem to me to be any anger in Peter. It, it's not anger or vengeance or judgment from him. It always seems to me that it's more sadness. <clears throat> you know, what do you think you're doing? You're lying to the Holy Spirit. How, how could the two of you agree to do this? Now, if you say, well, why don't things like this happen more often? Because the church is not living in the life of the Spirit in the way that God intends, that where there is that intensity of spiritual activity, you also see the judgment of God as well as the life of God. Uh, you know, this is a, a difficult subject really for us to explain because we don't want things like this to be going on. And I'm sure God doesn't want it because God wants transparency, he wants honesty, he wants purity of heart uh, in and among his people. So I can only think that God judged Ananias and Sapphira in this way because it not only grieved Peter, but it grieved God. It, they grieved the Holy Spirit. 
And all I really want to get across from this is how important it is that we live in such ways that we do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We really seek to honor the Spirit by obeying the leading of the Spirit. And he is the Spirit of truth who guides us into all the truth of God's Word. Um, this fear is the awe of God. It's not being afraid. It's the awe of God that came upon people. And that awesomeness of God's presence and working among God's people should actually be in every church today. Not that things like this happen to encourage that fear, but because the fear of God, the awe of God is already there in the church because everybody is so intent on doing the will of the Lord. They don't want to disobey. They don't want to go against the leading of the Holy Spirit. So it's a healthy fear. It's a healthy fear, yes, yes. It's not being afraid of. It's, it's being in awe of the greatness of God. And here, God is... God has chosen to judge these people. And it's like a warning that just increases that sense of awesomeness. Wait a minute. We are handling the things of God. We are dealing with God himself, the Lord, the Almighty, the creator of the heaven and earth, who, yes, in his love sent his son to die for us and has given us salvation in and through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet... He is the judge of the living and the dead. He is the judge of all mankind. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 